This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be covering five Python Easter eggs that you must know as a Python developer. Maybe you're new to Python or maybe you've been programming in Python for a long time, but these are the five most famous Easter eggs that you can find in Python. Starting with a major time saver. Usually when you start a new program, you'll test it out by creating hello world and printing it. But this can lead to a lot of mistakes because typing it out each time means that sometimes you're gonna miss a comma, sometimes you're gonna put a full stop there, and sometimes you're going to just capitalize it incorrectly. So instead, what we can do is import a built-in module called hello. Then we can refer to it and use the main method that comes with this module. And with this simple import, we can now print hello world consistently. Although I guess everything I just said about that comma goes down the drain because there's no comma here. But at least we have points for consistency. Moving on to Easter egg number two. A lot of you have probably heard of the Zen of Python. And one way to find out what that is, is just to Google it and you'll get a very beautiful poem or you can also import this. And the next time you run your script, you're going to have the entire Zen of Python printed to the console. And it's a very beautiful poem by Tim Peters. And I can actually zoom out if you want to see the whole thing. As you can see, we have the full Zen of Python in the console. But that's not all we can do with this module. It also comes with a little challenge. And what I'm talking about is Try printing this dot s, and what you will notice in the console is a lot of random letters in a random order. And coincidentally, it's as long as the Zen of Python. So as you probably might have guessed, it might have something to do with that. But it also comes with something else, which is this dot d. And with that, you get some sort of dictionary or some sort of map that might or might not help you with this puzzle. So if you ever get bored, try to decipher what all of this is. Moving on to Easter egg number three. And to use this one, we're going to have to use the future module. So from future, we're going to import Berry as Fluffle. And Fluffle stands for Friendly Language Uncle for Life. And Berry was one of the core Python developers. I don't know if he still is today, but legend has it that he was one of the core Python developers. And he had this crazy idea that we should use the diamond operator instead of the not equals to operator for comparisons. So by importing this, we can now open up the Python console, not the terminal, but the Python console and import berry as fluffle so that every time we want to do some sort of comparison to check that something is not equal to something else, we will be forced to use the diamond operator. So for example, if we try to do 10 is not equal to 10, we're going to get a syntax error that Berry as Fluffle requires us to use the diamond operator instead of the not equals to operator. So now we can compare something else such as if Bob is not equal to Bob, and that's going to return false. It's going to work exactly the same as the not equals to operator. And PyCharm is going to give you a lot of syntax highlighting for it because it's not official syntax. Otherwise, if you want to use it in your script, you can't just use it directly because that's not going to work. Python does not recognize that as valid syntax. If you want to use it in your script like this, you're going to have to wrap it into a string. So you can say code of type string equals this code here, and then you're going to have to execute it. So we can do something such as print what evaluate will return to us, which is the code we are running. And then it will give us the result that we got in the console. Up next, we have Easter egg. That was such a weird accent. Up next, we have Easter egg number four. And once again, we're going to import from future braces, and we're going to get some immediate syntax highlighting, but bear with me on this because now when we actually try to run our script, we're going to get a very cool syntax error that there's not a chance that Python will use braces. And actually that's all you get here. It's just a very cute message. And finally, moving on to Easter egg number five, probably the most popular Easter egg. And this is the anti-gravity Easter egg. As soon as you try to import anti-gravity, 
it's going to open up a browser giving you this great comic, which practically just sums up the power of Python in a nutshell. But just like with everything, I like to really explore these modules. So one thing I noticed is that anti-gravity also had a geohash method. And what it requires is a latitude, a longitude, and a date DAO. So what I did is go to Google Maps, get this latitude and longitude from the Falkland Islands, and then I just typed in antigravity.geohash, passed in the latitude, the longitude, and then I inserted a date DAO buffer object. And what it gives us back first is the comic, but then it also prints out these coordinates. And all it does is compute the geohash using the Monroe algorithm. And I personally don't really know anything about geohashes. So if you have anything interesting to share regarding this, please leave it in the comment section down below. I just thought it was quite cute that they included this in a module such as anti-gravity. It's not something you really look into when you import it. All the articles on the internet just point to the comic. So it's actually quite funny that they even have a method inside here. But yeah, that just about sums up all of the most popular Easter eggs that you can find in Python. I'm sure I'm missing a few, so in case you know of any which I did not mention, please leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to learn about them, or I'm sure other people would love to learn about them as well. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.